we are going to discuss about the tibia this are tibia 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 is the second largest bone in human body which is medial bone in the leg articulates with femur to form the knee joint to hold this bone and at in anatomical position we have to determine side determination side determination is very important in long bone side determination of long bone is very important for side determination we have to know the two things in this bone tibial tuberosity this is tibial tuberosity that lies anteriorly in the upper end of the bone and medial malleolus this is medial malleolus that lies medially in the lower end so according to this two point this is left tibia okay tibial tuberosity lies anteriorly in the upper end and medial malleolus lies uh, in the lower end medially so this is a le uh, left tibia according to the position left or right we have to hold the bone in that respective end now anatomical position of this anatomical position anatomical position of this bone on human body upper end upper end consists of the two condyle that is one medial condyle is larger and lateral condyle is smaller which is present in upper end tibial tuberosity is a small bony projection that is present in upper end anteriorly on the posterior lateral aspect that is present of the facet which is known as fibular facet the shaft is cylindrical in shape which is directed downward in the lower end that is present of uh, middle malleolus which is directed vertically downward now i am going to de describe the presenting part of this bone presenting part of this bone is upper end shaft and lower end now part of upper end a part of upper end is medial condyle lateral condyle this is intercondylar area this intercondylar eminence this is intercondylar eminence and these are intercondylar tubercle and anteriorly there is presence of tibial tuberosity i already mentioned this and then in posterior lateral aspect there is presence of fibular facet now i am going to discuss about the attachment of intercondylar area attachment of intercondylar area is divided into anteriorly and posteriorly anteriorly there is one mnemonic from it is a relation okay from before backward there is one mnemonic known as medical college laur for young anterior horn of middle meniscus c anterior cruciate ligament and for all anterior horn of lateral meniscus I, again i am going to re repeat this mcl medical college laur anterior horn of middle meniscus anterior cruciate ligament anterior horn of lateral meniscus posteriorly there is also one relation from before backward that is uh, there is also one name i made the one mnemonic that is lumini medical college for from L posterior horn of lateral meniscus from M posterior horn of middle meniscus from C posterior cruciate ligament again i am going to repeat this relation it is very important relation so i am repeating this from L posterior horn of lateral meniscus from M posterior horn of middle meniscus from C posterior cruciate ligament now tibial tuberosity this is tibial tuberosity it has two part upper part is smooth part on which there is the insertion of ligamentum patelli and lower part is rough part which is subcutaneous and separated from skin by interpretalar bruise now come to the shaft of this bone the, uh, in the shaft there is presence of the three border and three surface border are anterior border this is sharp margin called anterior border which is also called scene of tibia or crest of tibia which direct comes in contact with the skin and is also subcutaneous and this is medial border anterior border medial border and this is lateral border lateral border or interosseous border interosseous border or lateral border anterior border medial border and the surface are this is medial surface this is lateral surface and this is posterior surface surface and border is very very important anterior anterior border lateral border medial border medial surface lateral surface and posterior surface now comes on mu muscle attachment to the medial surface uh, in the upper part of upper upper three fourth of the medial surface here there is the attachment of, of three muscles sartorius gracilis and semitendinous there is one mnemonic called mnemonic two surgeon one girl between two surgeon sartorius gracilis semitendinous semitendinous these are the guide group of the muscles which form tent like structure in the thigh they are the they are the muscles of different compartment of the thigh semitendinous is the muscles of the 
posterior compartment which is supplied by the tibial pa uh, which uh, the, the nerve supply of that muscle is tibial part of sciatic nerve sartorius is the anterior compartment muscles which is supplied by the femoral nerve and gracilis is the middle compartment muscle which is supplied by the anterior branch of obturator nerve uh, this is very very important Three, nerve supply of gyro group of muscles and their action their action is they act is the lateral rotators of hip joint in the lower part of the medial surface is subcutaneous upper part is sartorius gracilis semitendinous lower part is subcutaneous no. now i am going to discuss about the lateral surface of this bone lateral surface in upper three fourth in upper three fourth there is the origin of tibialis anterior in the lateral part in upper three fourth there is the uh, origin of tibialis anterior rest part is subcutaneous and lower part of anterior margin in the lower part of anterior margin it give, uh, gives to the tendon of superior extensor retinaculum okay upper three fourth tibialis and origin of tibialis anterior in lower part su superior extensor retinaculum now comes in posterior surface on the posterior surface there is presence of one solial line this is a solial line above the solial line on the triangular area there is the insertion of tendon of the popliteus muscles above the solial line Above the solial line in the triangular area, there is the insertion of the popliteus muscles. On the solial line, there is presence of the soleus muscles. Covering of the soleus, soleus muscles is fascia covering popliteus, fascia covering soleus, soleus muscles, deep transverse fascia, fascicle septums. Below the solial line, this is solial line. Below the solial line, it is divided into two parts, lateral part and medial part. It is, it is, it is solial line and divided into two parts, medial part and lateral part. On the lateral part, origin of the tibialis anterior. On the lateral part, origin of tibialis anterior. And the medial part, origin of the flexor digitorum longus. Lateral part, origin of tibialis anterior. And medial part, origin of the flexor digitorum longus. On the lower end, now comes to the lower end. Lower end have five surface, anterior surface, posterior surface, medial surface, lateral surface, and one inferior surface. It is not, I'll tell the relation, an attachment of lower end of anterior surface and posterior surface later. Now middle malleolus. Middle malleolus has four surfaces: anterior surface, posterior surface, middle surface, lateral surface, and this is uh, super uh, inferior border. Attachment of attachment of uh, lower attachment of the lower end on the anterior surface. Anterior surface attachment is from medial to lateral tendon of tibialis anterior, tendon of extensor hallucis longus, anterior tibial vessels deep peridial nerve, tendon of extensor digitorum longus, corneus tarsus. It is the relation from the medial to lateral. There is one mnemonics in the Bangla. Amar as ecta nostra dim parase. Uh, amar tendon of tibialis anterior, as tendon of extensor hallucis longus, ecta anterior tibial vessels, nostra deep peridial nerve, dim tendon of tibialis, tendon of anterior digitorum longus, parase tendon of corneus uh, tarsus. In the posterior surface, there is also one relation from the medial to lateral. There is, uh, on the medial side, there is the tendon of tibialis posterior, tendon of flexor digitorum longus, posterior tibial vessels, tibial nerve, tendon of flexor hallucis longus. There is also one pneumonis in the Bangla, tik tik tim bhange nakal olam, tendon of tibialis posterior, tendon of flexor digitorum longus, posterior tibial vessels, tibial nerve, tendon of flexor hallucis longus. Attachment in the inferior border of the malleolus. This is inferior border of the malleolus. Attachment is anterior ligament of the ankle joint. There is presence of nutrient foramen in the posterior uh, 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 in the posterior surface, which is directed downward. That means upper end is growing in, and uh, this is supplied by uh, it is it is the largest nutrient artery, which is supplied by the posterior tibial artery. Ossification of this bone. It is ossified from. Uh, three center of ossification, one is primary center and two secondary center of ossification. And now I am going to discuss about the joint formed by this bone. Joint formed by this bone, uh, it in superiorly it articulates with femur to form the knee joint, which is here in front there is presence of the patella, this is a knee joint, it is modif uh, modified type of hing joint. Lower it articulates with the talus to form the ankle joint, which is also a type of synovial joint. Clinical anatomy of this bone. Upper end, upper end of the tibia is most common site for acute osteomyelitis. The knee joint remains safe bec uh, because 
the capsule is attached to the articular margin of the tibia. The tibia, uh, the tibia is commonly fractured at the junction of upper two third and lower one third because the shaft is more cylindrical here. Forward dislocation of the tibia at the talus provides a characteristic prominence, characteristic prominence of the heel. This is most common type of ankle injury. There is another clinical importance known as intraosseous infusion. It is very very important clinical anatomy related to this bone. Uh, in case of shock patient, tibia is used as intraosseous assess for providing a vascular assess in resection of a critically ill or injured patient when traditional inter, inter, intravenous assess is difficult or impossible. In simple language, it is uh, tell that in patient with shock, when it is difficult to assess a vascular site, infusion is given by puncturing the scene of the tibia from here. Infusion is given by per, uh, putting the needle inside. So it is known as intraosseous infusion. It is very, very important in case of shock patient for giving the fluid if we cannot recognize the vascular site. And tibia is also one of the site of tripping trip biopsy of a bone marrow. It is a good site for steam cell harvest. Thank you for watching our video. If you like your, our video, then please like, share, comment and subscribe our channel for getting more information about medical science. Thank you. Thank you.